everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, yes, I'm still in like all my outdoor clothing, not because I'm going anywhere, but because I just went to see a movie. And this isn't a movie that was based on a book. It is completely not, just not book related at all. This is a 100% original film. And I just got back from seeing Interstellar, Chris Nolan's latest movie, and I saw it in IMAX. Yeah, they gave me a free poster. Dude, it's like film swag. It's pretty amazing. Actually, it's really beautiful. It's illustrated. It's a really beautiful print. I can't wait to get this up on my wall. For this talk about Interstellar, I'm not gonna really tell you the plot because really knowing anything about this film is gonna ruin it for you. So here's what I had gathered from trailers when I went to go see this film. The Earth is dying and we need to go find a new planet to live on. Literally, that's pretty much all I'd figured out about this movie and that's all you need to know. So basically what I'm going to do is just kind of give you my gut reaction to the film because I have a lot of gut reactions and a lot of emotions right now. I went to go see this movie with a friend of mine from work. We were actually originally going to go and try to see Horns, but they apparently pulled it from theaters early in my area, so we were like, oh crap. Okay, so we need a second choice. So the only movie either of us had any interest really in seeing was Interstellar, and it happened to be playing in an IMAX theater, and we are just like, we'll just go see it in IMAX. <laughs> we'll go see that. So we did, and we were really excited about it. <sighs> Gut reaction when I walked out of the film. Uh, uh. <sighs> I think I'm in shock. You know how people talk about shock? And shock is sort of like, your brain hasn't really caught up yet. That's how I felt walking out of this film. And not in a bad way, not in like, I'm confused and I don't know what's happened. The science was enough that I was, I think, able to understand it. I'm fairly certain I understood everything that happened. In fact, I kind of called a lot of the stuff that was going to happen in the end. Maybe a third of the way into the movie, I was already calling stuff that was going to happen at the end, which isn't in any way a bad thing. I'll touch on that. But I walked out and my brain was just like, Poof. and my emotions were just like, Poof. yeah, let's just maybe single out some things. Characters, they're human. They talk like a Nolan movie. What do I mean by this? A Nolan script, like the dialogue, should not work. Kind of like a Tarantino film. Nobody talks like that. Nobody talks like that. The dialogue shouldn't work. But because we go into these films, either consciously or unconsciously, accepting the auteur theory, we accept that this dialogue is not necessarily going to be natural. So if I go into a Nolan film, and I'm usually assuming this is being written by Chris Nolan and his brother, I'm assuming the dialogue is gonna contain some monologues, be very philosophical, <laughs> or scientific, or a bit of both, and um, nobody talks like that. If I go and see a Tarantino film, I know it's gonna be kind of off-kilter and just odd, slightly unnatural, but it works because I've accepted the auteur theory. I accept that I'm seeing a Nolan film. I accept that I'm seeing a Tarantino film. In this case, I definitely accepted I was seeing a Nolan film because it's Chris Nolan and his brother. When we're talking about writing, I do mean Nolan and his brother. There is some dialogue, which I go, this, this shouldn't be working, but you know, I'm accepting it because it's a Nolan film and I'm accepting it. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what these people have to say. Even if sometimes I was just like, I'm frustrated with you, but in a good way. I'm frustrated with these characters because they're human and sometimes they make mistakes. And I'm just like, mm, it wasn't a good idea. Also, bonus point in this movie, surprise Matt Damon shows up. That's not a spoiler because he's a character who's mentioned early on, but you don't know who's playing him. I didn't go in knowing the full cast list. I knew Matt McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, and Jessica Chastain, and Michael Caine. Literally the only four people I knew who were in the movie. I didn't know any of the other actors of the cast list because I didn't look it up and so I was like surprise Matt Damon. Also I don't know who voiced the artificial intelligence TARS. Just whoever you are I'm in love with your voice and this character who's a robot. Not even like a humanoid robot like rectangles. I don't know what I was just trying to do with my hand. The music. Holy shit, guys, the music. I pretty much figured it was Hans Zimmer just because I've realized that no one clearly likes working with Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer is very creative and experimental at times, and I enjoy that. Just one word. Organ. Think Baroque organ. It's, it's, oh, it's so good. 
it was really good at bringing forth the emotional intensity of the film and then also had some really good quiet moments but dude when that organ kicked in i was just like oh organ production effects beautiful it's very beautiful to look at cinematography wise the design of the ship that they get on oh it was awesome it spins like i'm not a science person but I knew enough from hearing conversations with my dad, who's kind of interested in aviation and the physics of aviation and stuff like that, that um, what they did in that film, I just went, that's like scientifically the best, oh my gosh, wait, I know that, I know these things, I'm knowing things, so I'm understanding why the ship is designed this way. It doesn't just seem like a weird piece of sci-fi, it actually makes physics sense. I can't explain the physics to you because I don't really know physics and I don't really care that much about physics. Also, speaking on the science of this film, there's a book called The Science of Interstellar. I posted it on my Instagram before I decided I was going to see Interstellar because I thought it was funny because it has this big spot on it that says, spoiler, like, you know, reveals things from the climax of the new Chris Nolan film. And I was just like, <laughs> well, thanks for warning me not to read this book. I haven't seen Interstellar yet. Now that I've seen Interstellar, I actually really want to go read this book. I don't do science. And I want to read a science book. Plot. I would say that there is a twist in this film, but there isn't. There wasn't for me because there were a lot of things I predicted, but I was, again, when I was predicting things, kind of throwing them out as guesses because I obviously hadn't seen the movie, didn't know anything about it, there were guesses. But here's the thing about twists. Oftentimes they're not actually twists. All the clues and the groundwork for this reveal or whatever have you in any film, good film at least, has been laid. But because it's all out of context, it seems like a surprise. And what is actually a surprise is not a surprise. It's an epiphany. It's a sudden rush of understanding. All these little pieces, these seemingly unconnected things some important, some not. Just all of a sudden glue together and it's it's kind of like a rubber band, boom, coming back. That's the way I think of twists and or reveals or anything like that in a film, in a book. It's just like all of a sudden complete understanding. It's an epiphany. You're definitely going to get that in this film. Maybe more than once. I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to talk about plot. It's an emotional roller coaster. In the best way. Um, I look at Interstellar and for me, if I look at Chris Nolan's films from Batman Begins to present, really kind of his, at least in terms of the popular consciousness, I think, breakout, Batman Begins, The Prestige, Dark Knight, Inception, Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, there's a theme. There's a theme and there's a progression. It took me seeing this film and, and thinking about it in the car on the way home um to think that i might have gotten it I mean, of course i could be totally blowing smoke out my butt for all i know but if there was a subtitle to all of this you know like interstellar be nolan and the apotheosis of man apotheosis is a greek word essentially meaning ascension to god so the idea that man becomes god Maybe I should rephrase and say man becomes a god. Um, so nobody take this the wrong way. Um, not in that man has divine powers, but that the very thing that makes us so human, this sheer force of will, the spirit, the ghost in the shell, the whatever you wish to call it, that thing can make man accomplish wonders. That's why we love stories like of underdogs these stories where all the cards are stacked against us in slightly more vulgar terms we're fucked somehow we managed to make it through and it's we don't make it through by some divine power we make it through the power of ourselves believing there are no boundaries and once you realize that there are no boundaries really there aren't any that you have to look at things almost from the point of a different dimension in a different way things get revealed things get made clear we are constantly bringing ourselves up we are attempting to have our own apotheosis in a way become a god and i think nolan has been tapping into that with with his films from batman begins early to now 
if I could explain this whole apotheosis thing better, I would. But right now, again, brain is still in shock. Uh, but I will say this. Get the hence to an IMAX theater if you can, but if not, to a theater. And see Interstellar. Because it's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Everybody go see this film, so till next time. Cheers.